everybody and welcome to yet another of the most hotly anticipated and debated videos I've ever produced. This is Northern Lion Ranks All Fruits and Vegetables, also known as Produce or Produce. This is made by Jumble Boo in the community, the Northern Lion subreddit, who also made a cheat sheet, which is incredible. So any of these that I don't recognize on site, I actually have a, a Google Doc spreadsheet that I can use to, to cross-reference. It's a wonderful situation. It's also ironic, because I noticed that with my headphones like this, my, my head is looking rather... ovoid, shall we say. It's like an egg ranking vegetables. Man, what a world we live in today. Anyway, let's get it started again. Jumble Boo, thank you so much for the exhaustive list. I have previously seen a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables tier lists. They usually have like eight fruits and vegetables on them. It's like the only fruits and vegetables people know are like onions, potatoes, and carrots. This one is, is much more robust. And on top of that, it also has... Excuse me, on highlight, thank you. It also has uh, a never had it tier, which is perfect. So let's get started. I didn't know what these were at first. These are acai berries. I'm willing to tell you, I have never had an acai bowl or an acai berry in my life, despite them being very uh, popular in the, in the health and wellness community especially. And you'd think on the West Coast, you know, I might uh, have come across it in my day. I haven't. So... Sorry, this man. It could be walking down the street. I wouldn't know a thing. This is an acorn squash, I believe. Hold on. Let me... Let me scroll up. It is an acorn squash. <laughs> um, this, we're going to be causing all sorts of problems in, in today's episodes. I have very peculiar tastes, perhaps. I do not like squash at all. I don't like squash. I don't like gourds. I don't like pumpkins. I, I know, you're like, what about spaghetti squash? I, I just don't... I mean, I'll eat it. I'll eat anything. That's the... I have peculiar tastes, but also, I am just a trash compactor. I'll, I'll eat... I'm an organic reactor. I'll eat anything. It's just a matter of how, how much this thing up here enjoys it while it's happening. I'm not a squash man. Alfalfa sprouts. To be honest with you, alfalfa sprouts... I gotta put them in the little bads here. Uh, I feel like these are not that popular anymore, but there was a period like around the start of the 2010s where anytime you got like a sandwich with a vegetable on it, they would also put on alfalfa sprouts. Sprouts became like ubiquitous. You couldn't couldn't shake a stick without seeing them. Um, why Little Bad? They, I, I just, I derive nothing of their existence. Most of the time when I'm eating alfalfa sprouts, I don't even know they're in there. Um, if I eat an alfalfa sprout by itself, it just tastes like atoms. It, does, it has no flavor. It has minimal flavor, let's put it that way. No disrespect to it. But the, we, there's not a lot of great vegetables in the A tier, okay? Fruits, on the other hand. Apples. This is a tough one for me, because it's got to be astounding or good. It might be the, the most well-liked or second most well-liked uh, fruit on the planet. It's a very tough one for me. I prefer bananas, but does that make apples worse? I, I certainly could not say yes. There's a wide variety of apples. Does that work with it or against it? Great question, you know? Um, like a Fuji apple, a uh, Honeycrisp apple, delicious. Macintosh, red delicious, little mealy, not, not great. That being said, I think you gotta put apples in the astounding tier. Convenient? Many varieties, ubiquitous, you can, you can buy them anywhere. You can buy them at coffee shops sometimes. Um, useful for consumption on its own. Sorry, I should be doing this in the camera. Useful for consumption on its own. Useful in uh, juices, fruit salads, other salads, even on a sandwich. You can have a thinly sliced little bit of apple on a sandwich. I, I think it's an astounding fruit. Apricots. Or, as I like to call them, worse peaches. I don't like, I, I don't love, I should say, a lot of the stone fruits, to be honest. A lot of the pitted fruits. I love a peach, but an apricot, I always, uh, it's never really been my cup of tea. I also have no idea 
What's the difference between an, an apricot and a nectarine? To me, they're like... They're all just like they threw a plum and a peach and an apple and a lemon into like a, a DNA recombinator. And then like four different fruits popped out. But I do think... I would probably put them in the little bad tier. I You might think I'm like, oh, bad. No, they still taste good. And beyond that, an apricot juice can be delicious. Like... The, this Pyramid Apricot Ale is basically like drinking alcoholic fruit juice with a little bit of a beer carbonation and malted taste. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't really respect the, the apricot by itself. And to be honest with you, I kind of feel the same about artichokes. I don't think they're bad. I think they are... A little bad, not because I dislike the flavor, but because I never buy them. I only I only consume them in a heart of artichoke situation, or an artichoke heart situation, on like a pizza or in a salad or something. Um, I, I think they have limited uses, and that's my, that's my personal opinion on that one. Asparagus, on the other hand, good tier, without a doubt. Why not astounding? Maybe this is not fair, but it's expensive. You know, if you buy like a head of lettuce, it's like a, a couple dollars, a few dollars maybe. You can make like eight salads out of it. You buy a bundle of asparagus, that's a side for two people once. So it's, it's a bougie vegetable. Well, people are waiting for me to say, oh, and plus it makes your pea smell weird. I don't acknowledge that as a valid criticism because... You shouldn't be smelling your pee to begin with. I would never eat a delicious vegetable, which I think asparagus is, and then uh, six hours later go to the bathroom and be like, I take it back. It wasn't worth it. You're in you're just getting out there. Get out of the bathroom. Stop being a baby. Is is a good. It's a good vegetable. Um. Sorry, I'm looking at what's coming next. This, obviously, I know this is an avocado. I was seeing what kind of mushroom this is. Avocados, um, personally, I put them in the middle range, but I understand this is, middle range probably represents close to the lower bound for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people probably buy a few avocados a week. Avocado toast, homemade guacamole, put it in salads, slice it, put it on a sandwich, you know, you get the idea. I'm for that. We, we make a lot of food that requires avocados. I have, I've said this in the grocery store tier list. You can cross-reference if you want. I have a few problems with avocados, even though I like the flavor. One is uh, a little expensive, for sure. There's a reason they're the scorn of boomers who are mad that millennials are complaining about the housing market uh, grossly outpacing the rise of wages. Got them. Um, on top of that... The ripeness perfection window is so small. A banana has like a five-day window where I enjoy it as much as I would on any of the other given days. An avocado is like two hours. You catch it a little too early, it's, it's too firm and not unpleasant, but not as pleasant. You catch it two hours later, it's jelly. It's just green jelly. But the, if you catch it at the perfect window, it's beautiful. So for me, it's the middle range. But I do like it. I understand. This is this is like, an, if we're in EA Sports, this is like a 78 overall with an A potential stat. It could rise in the future. I have no idea what a baby bella mushroom is. I would call these button mushrooms. And it does not appear that button mushrooms are, are coming up later. So uh, how do I feel about a button mushroom? I don't like mushrooms that much in general. Um... I think that a button mushroom is on the lower end of, of mushrooms to begin with as well. Um, this is probably, I don't know, maybe like a just a straight up white mushroom is a little bit more common. Maybe this is a white, I don't know. This is not my favorite kind of mushroom, let me put it that way. But I'm not putting it in garbage tier because I recognize that my mushroom weirdness is my own thing to own. It's not, it's not the mushroom's fault. Bartlett pears? This is a very tough one for me. I think I love pears a lot more than the average person. Whenever I talk to people about pears, they one of the most common things people say to me is that it's just a worse apple. I kind of agree, but it took me a while to get to that point, okay? Um, so, for me personally, 
I I think that Bartlett pears. It's a lot like an avocado. If you get it too early, it's not ripe enough. It's like eating a piece of wood. It's it's like there's no juice in it, and it's just eating bark. Um, sorry, I just got sleepy for some reason. Um, if you get it later when it softens up, I think they're delicious. Sometimes even criminally so. You bite in and the juice is like all over your shirt. But I, I would say that Bartlett pears for me are middle range. But it's a caveat emptor. You gotta you gotta make sure you're buying the right ones. I again I don't know much about tomato varieties. This is a beefsteak tomato. I'm trying to see, do we have like a, a hot house tomato coming up later? Do we have other tomatoes? We do have a few other tomato varietals. Um I don't know, to be honest. Uh this is a tough one for me. I'm going to put it in the middle range. I don't really like the flavor of tomatoes, but they are ubiquitous cooking ingredients, and I like the things you make with tomatoes. So, I, you know, it's maybe the first food on this list that I'm not necessarily evaluating entirely on its own taste merits, but instead uh, looking to it as a utility to be used in other, in other culinary functions, you know? So I think a tomato is a necessary ingredient, um, but it's not my favorite. And if we're talking about putting it in a salad... No thank you. Give me give me a Roma or a cherry tomato any day of the week. What the heck is this? Bitter melon. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've ever had a bitter melon. I think this is... Maybe I've had one when I lived in Korea, but I'm not sure. I, that's one I don't know. Black olives. So, are, are there Kalamata olives on this list? There's like kale, kiwi. I don't believe there are Kalamata olives. There must be uh, green olives? Yes, green olives. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I uh, I think a black olive is in the middle range. This picture conjures not very much culinary joy for me. I love an olive, okay? But a black olive pitted, not soaked in brine is kind of just... It's just matter, but it's pleasant texture for me. A green olive has a little bit more of a, a vinegar style bite to it. I like that a little bit more. But I do like a, I like a black olive, okay? I like Kalamata olives a lot. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm pro olive. But this is probably my least favorite type. This is a... Um, it's a plum, right? But like what... what it's a black plum. Okay. Um... I feel the same about plums that I do about nectarines, or sorry, apricots. But I feel like people um, are, I don't want to say divided. I think people much prefer plums, to be honest. But I have the same problem with plums that I have with uh, with apricots, which is, and pears for that matter. You get it on the right day, soft, juicy, delicious. You get it on the wrong day, you're eating, you know... It's like biting into styrofoam. Also, I think as a kid, and it, I, this is literally coming back to me in the moment, but I think I bit into a plum and like chipped a tooth. And right now when I think about biting into like the center of a plum, the only thing my brain is sending is a signal that's like, remember how it felt when you bit into that pit and it's sending a shiver down my spine. Blackberries. Well, we got blackberries and blueberries right next to one another, okay? Blackberries, I think, are a middle-range fruit, and blueberries, I think, are good to astounding. I might even... No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep them in the good range. I love the taste of a blueberry. I like blackberries okay, but I love the taste of a blueberry. They're just expensive. Um, and I'm always paranoid you're going to get that one blueberry in an otherwise great carton that is molded over. It's just, like, fuzzy and white, and you're like, ugh. But yeah, I, I, berries, I would eat so much more of them if they weren't so expensive, but, I mean, the market dictates, supposedly. Um, bananas, it's, I, you don't need to belabor the point again, these were also in the astounding tier on the grocery store tier list. Six bananas at the grocery store is like a dollar, dollar and four cents, and they're individually packaged delicious carbohydrate delivery systems. They stay delicious for like five days of their eight-day lifespan. And you can, I love that when you buy a banana, you can do like banana planning. You can be like, oh, there's four green ones in here and one yellow one. So I can have a banana tomorrow and then wait a day and then I'll have four bananas good to go for the rest of the week. 
or you're like, oh, we're going to be away for two days. So let's get the greenest bananas here. They, I love that a banana is like, there's that Mitch Hedberg, right? Or Mitch Hedberg joke, I should say. That is like, uh, bananas are like a, a reverse stoplight. Green means wait. Yellow means go. And red means where the heck did you get that banana? Anyway. A Bosque or Bosch. I always called it a Bosch pair. But a Bosque pair. Here's some controversy for you. I like the brown pairs more than the green pairs. I don't know why. I feel like these tend to get a little mealy. You know? And these are always crisp. Sometimes, again, it is like eating a tree. But if you get it on the right day, it's got that right crispiness. It's almost like an Asian pear instead of... Uh, I'm trying to... Because you might not know what an Asian pear is. <laughs> trying to see if it's on the list here. You know, it's the, the huge white pear. I don't know if it does... Ex it, it has different names. Anyway, I think these are a good fruit. I, I, when I buy pears, I tend to buy these. Now, this is a breadfruit. I've, not only have I never had it, I don't think I've ever heard of it. And then this is called broccoli rabe, also known as rapini. I will tell you, I have had rapini in dishes, but I could not, uh, I could not tell you what it tastes like. So I got to put that in never had it, to be honest. Broccoli itself... Easily elevated above the middle range. Maybe just short of astounding. Um, I think broccoli... I've talked about this in the grocery store tier list. Broccoli is... For a while... Yeah, I love that it's right next to Brussels sprouts. Because we're going to get a great compare and contrast. Um, broccoli... 10 years ago was what Brussels sprouts are now. I feel like every... Well, maybe like 15 years ago. Everybody started to wake up. They're like, we've been told for years that broccoli is disgusting. Kids don't want to eat their broccoli. Dads don't want to eat their broccoli. Nobody wants to eat broccoli. That's because you were putting it in a lukewarm water bath for eight hours like it's the Great Depression or something. Nowadays, we got modern solutions for modern problems and broccoli is delicious. Baked, steamed, put in a stir fry, etc., etc. Even boiled, honestly, I can get down with I love a broccoli. Everybody respects it now. I'm glad it's getting the credit it deserves. Brussels sprouts. I think they're where broccoli was 15 years ago. They're starting to come up. If you if you go to... I mean, at least on the West Coast, every trendy restaurant has some kind of Brussels sprout dish now. Usually, they are um, sliced thinly and then baked or fried so they get a little crispy. A little salt, a little Parmesan cheese, a little lemon juice. Sometimes some capers is fantastic. Sometimes they're tempura. It's very good. Sometimes they're deep fried. Um, it's the same, almost the same methodology. I love Brussels sprouts. They might actually be my favorite vegetable. If you boil them, your plate and your house will smell like farts. I will still eat them, but they're not, it's not the best. If you prepare these in the proper way and almost treat them like a, like a potato chip, you can make some absolutely delicious Brussels sprouts. Highly recommended if you've always thought they tasted like farts. Um, butternut squash. I do prefer a butternut squash slightly to an acorn squash. Orange squash, I do not like as much. But it's, it's still not my favorite. I'm going to tell you this is Napa cabbage or green cabbage. I think cabbage is an S-tier vegetable. And it's the same kind of flavor profile. I mean, this is just tiny versions of this, you know? Cabbage, if you've only had cabbage as like boiled garbage, maybe you like boiled garbage, in which case I apologize. If you've only had it as boiled garbage, you're missing out. What do you do with a, with a cabbage? Split the leaves, put it in a big mixing bowl. A little sesame oil, salt, pepper, mix it up. Look, it's not an extremely nutritious salad, but it's a nice little, you know, snack or an accoutrement to a dish. I love cabbage. If you, if you chop it like julienne cabbage and put it in a, a stir fry or something like that as well, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Disrespected. Cactus pear. <laughs> never, never heard of it. Put it in here. Um, cantaloupe. I love melon more than the average person. 
I would say uh, both can. But sometimes it's the same with olives. People are like, "Yeah, I like cantaloupe, but honeydew is tasteless." I'm not in that boat. I actually prefer honeydew, but I would say a cantaloupe for me is middle range. I never buy it unless it's like pre-cubed, and even then, I still don't really buy it. Um, just because it's it's so large, it's not a very efficient fruit in that sense, in my opinion. But people are like. They go to like fruit salads and they, they're like, I'm going to eat around the cantaloupe. You're crazy. It's delicious. Get over it. Carrots? I think carrots are overrated and simultaneously good. I think that this is like every 11-year-old's favorite vegetable that isn't potatoes or corn. Um, but still, I think carrots are, are delicious. I have fond memories. Carrots are one of the few vegetables that's good raw and also cooked as well. Um, you can eat, just chop up some carrot sticks, dip them in hummus, or eat them as is. Uh, you can also, you can slice them into circles, put them in a dish. You can roast them whole under, uh, you know, like a pork roast or a beef roast. And you got your Sunday roast vegetable right there. It's ubiquitous. I, I love a carrot. Cauliflower, on the other hand. I, I really just see it as, like, I'll, I'll level with you. I don't buy it. I don't buy cauliflower. I know that it's, it's having a, it's moment. It's cauliflower's moment because it gets, now with like people on keto and otherwise mindful of their carbohydrate intake, cauliflower gets what's known as riced. And then it's used as a, a, a substitute for rice or even like, you know, pizza dough or mashed potatoes and stuff like that. Um, but I just don't really like the flavor of cauliflower as much as broccoli. I do not think they taste the same. This tastes green. This tastes white. It's just that simple. Celery? I'm willing, and this, this hurts me to its core. I'm willing to put celery in the little bad tier. I'm not willing to put it in bad, and I actually really like celery, but its uses are so narrow in the modern day right now. Um... Yes, you can eat it raw. You can dip it. It's, those are advantages. And the caveat here is, if you're making a soup, you need celery for the mirepoix. You know? You need to be able to have that component to it. But apart from that, I don't really use celery very much. So I, I think for me, I do buy... I probably buy it more than anything else that I've put in the little bad... I'll tell you, I definitely buy it more than anything else I put in the little bad tier. But this is not something that has the same kind of, like versatility and deliciousness is anything that I've put above it, in my opinion. Chanterelle mushrooms. I'll level with you. These and... I don't know if these are also oyster mushrooms, but uh, these and oyster mushrooms and lobster mushrooms are my favorite mushrooms. So I would actually throw these up in the middle range. I actually derive the slightest amount of pleasure from eating these. Cherries. To be honest with you, this is a tough one for me. I think I have to... I'm, I'm really deliberating. I think I have to put cherries in the middle range. I don't buy them very often. Kate buys them now and then. And when she buys them, I, I like eating them. I like... I like... Fruits that are... Convenient. That You're gonna see a recurring theme here. The cherry is a very convenient fruit. You know? You can adjust your serving size quite... Uh, quite minutely. Quite discreetly. What are you? Are you the pears that I've been thinking of? <laughs> One second. That's a Chinese pear? So I'm going to operate on the assumption that this is the Asian pear that I was talking about earlier, but is not necessarily the same. The ones that I was talking about are much more spherical than kind of like oblong like this. But I think these also... Uh, I think they exist in the good tier as well, if this is indeed an Asian pear, also known as a Korean pear, depending on uh, what kind of grocery store you buy it at. Um, it has one knock. They tend to be super expensive. Like a, a Korean pear can be like 3 to $4 a pear. And I, by pear, I mean for one. <laughs> Not for two. But they are delicious. I can't deny that. So I, I, I would put it up there for sure. Um... Coconut? I don't think so. <laughs> Hold on. Cucumbers, cranberries, collard greens, 
I don't think Coconut made it onto this list. I'm looking at it in alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, collard greens. I like them. I'd, I'd put them in the middle range. I, I like, like, bitter, leafy green vegetables, to be honest. Now, it's not my favorite. I would prefer a kale or a spinach, but, but still, I do like it. Um, did I rearrange some of these? Hold on. Oh, no, these are cranberries. These are not radishes. <laughs> cranberries, I'm going to go ahead and put it in a little bad. I do not buy them, really. Um, I like cranberry juice. I, I really do. But uh, I, don't, I don't buy cranberries themselves. Nor I don't really like cranberry sauce either. So there's no... To be honest, I think I might even put it down there. It is, I will admit, it's a victim of balance right now. But at the same time, I don't really... Uh, I've never purchased these, and I only like one thing that they make. Cucumber, on the other hand. Let's go ahead and toss that, in my opinion, in the middle range. I like cucumber a lot. Um, but I, cucumber is almost like an inverted vegetable. I like it raw. I don't really like it cooked in any capacity, which I think limits its usability and keeps it in the middle range here. The daikon radish is almost, it's the inverted version of the, of, of the cucumber. But it stays in the middle tier as well. I do not like a raw... Well, I don't mind a, a pickled radish, for sure. But I don't really like a uh, a, a raw radish. Uh, the red radish, raw and thinly sliced, can be good, though. But cooked, this is like a ubiquitous ingredient in, in Japanese cuisine especially. And I really like it cooked. So I, I got to keep that in the middle range for now. Dates. This is uh, going to throw you for a loop. I mean, I have had dates... But I don't think I've had them enough to have a real opinion on them. I've only had like two in my entire life. But as I understand it, it's kind of a large sweet raisin. So my thinking is for me, little bad, but we'll move on. So I have, it, it, I'm just being honest here, okay? I have had dragon fruit, but I've had so little of it that I can't, uh, I can't really have an opinion. And the same with Dorian, to be honest. So th all these are, you know, prickly fruits. They're going down here. I have had dragon fruit, um, but I haven't had it enough to have an opinion. It would be very easy for me to lie to you to see to see more worldly. But the honest and, and true answer is that I don't think I would feel confident in my ratings on any of these. I've had like, you know, durian flavored ice cream. I've had dragon fruit flavored ice cream or, you know, a dessert with a dragon fruit garnish or something like that. But it's not, it's not enough to, to either edify them or vilify them, okay? Uh, edamame? I mean, I, I think this is a good vegetable, to be honest. Well, you know, honestly, I'm going to toss a middle range. This is a weird one. It's a vegetable I only really consume uh, at restaurants. But I do like it, for sure. I am, I'm unconcerned about my soy consumption as a man who, uh, first off, doesn't consume kilograms of it on a daily basis and secondly uh has had the shave since i was 13 has a bass voice and also went bald in my teenage years um and had back hair when i was in 10th grade i am i am unconcerned to a high degree about this but if anything if it increases the level of phytoestrogen it might benefit me <laughs> but i keep trying and it's not working okay edamame acceptable eggplant i didn't have to look it up i'm just keeping the list in the in a good place to be cross cross referential eggplant don't at me i don't like it i just don't like it if you like it that's fine if you're cooking it for me i'll eat it if you're making a baba ganoush i'll dip it but i, I do not enjoy an eggplant myself in any capacity endives or endives i, I never know but i'll tell you i uh i consume them now and then Usually at a fancy restaurant where it comes alongside of whatever entree I want. I don't derive much pleasure from eating this vegetable. The, the endive is, uh, is it's quite bitter. And I already like bitter flavors, but it's, it's even a little bit too bitter for me. So that's, that's not really where I want to be on this one. Fava beans. Is there another name for a fava bean? Another name for fava bean. Broad beans. 
I have had fava beans. Um, but I think I, I can't... I Honestly, I have to recuse myself. I apologize. Fennel. Fennel's weird, right? Like, for me, I, I would even toss it in a little bad. I think it has great flavor, but I think I've only ever consumed it in sausage form. Like, it being used in sausage making, which is fine. But, you know, it gets a little bad for utility and ubiquity, not for flavor, necessarily. Garlic? Astounding. Is, uh... Literally, if I'm cooking, there's garlic going in it. I, I can't think of a dish that I would make that wouldn't have garlic that is, a, like, a savory dish. If I'm making a Belgian waffle, I'm not gonna put garlic in it. But if I was making a Belgian waffle and I was gonna put, like, I don't know, like, cottage cheese and smoked salmon on it, I might put some minced garlic in the batter. I don't know. I... I use it... Every, it's not just me. Everybody uses this all the time. It's, it's basically salt and pepper. Ginger oftentimes gets lumped in with garlic. In my personal opinion, ginger ends up in the good tier instead of the astounding tier. It is delicious, is not used as commonly, and tends to be paired with sweeter, flavor, sweeter flavors as opposed to savory flavors, which is also fine. Um, mainly... Honestly, I like the flavor of garlic more. I use it more. And ginger uh, can be a little bit more of a pain to work with because it's a little woodier. It's harder to mince. Oftentimes, it is, uh, it's grated. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark that against it because I, I hate using a grater. You, you want to mince garlic? It's done. Sometimes a recipe is like grate an entire bulb of ginger. And I'm like, oh, God. Get, roll up the sleeves Popeye style. Still, I respect it. Gold potato. Okay, so that's what this is. Um, a gold potato. We In Canada, we call them Yukon Golds. This is not my favorite potato. I would say it's a middle range, but I do like it a lot. What the heck are you? A gooseberry. I have not had you. A green apple? Okay, so let's assume uh, that this is just like... I don't know. This, to me, this looks like a Fuji or a Honeycrisp. I would put green apple, to be honest with you, in the little bad tier. This is like an apple soaked in vinegar. It's gone sour. These should be then... Grape tomatoes. Okay. Okay. We just have slightly different names for things sometimes. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't call these cherry tomatoes, because cherry tomatoes are, like, circular, but, you know. Maybe we call them Roma tomatoes, but those show up later, I think, as, as well. I think, um, pretty much I would put these up here, right next to the beefsteak tomato. They do have a little bit more ubiquity in, in salads, I'll admit. Okay, grapefruit. Very tough one for me. I'm going to keep it in the middle range, but I like it a lot. I like the flavor of a grapefruit. It loses points. It's a little messy. Um, and the pith is is very bitter. Um, like, I love the flavor of citrus fruits. I hate peeling them. And then, you know, if you pull out a knife to slice them up or you scoop it out with a spoon, that's fine. But at the same time, uh, you know, you don't have to do that for an apple and banana. So, you know, you, you face some problems by by being here. Anyway, I like a, I think a grapefruit's delicious. However, I am also surprised that like nobody likes this except me, and yet it's very expensive most of the time. What's up with that? As it is huge. This is like, you know, it's an 11-pound baby of a fruit. So green avocados? This is weirding me out. I didn't even know these existed. Every avocado I've ever seen looks like this. I don't believe I've ever had a green avocado. Uh, these are plantains. I'm going to have to honestly recuse myself from that one as well. I don't know enough about it. Green beans. I like them. I'm trying to think of where I put them. I, th I think with edamame is a very fair place for those to be. I, I don't have anything negative to say about a green bean, except I don't think they're very good frozen. Um, but, you know, you trim the ends off and boil them or, or, or use them, you know, in a stir fry or saute them or something like that. I, I love the flavor of a green bean. Absolutely. I, I mean, I would, I would 
You know what I like about green beans versus edamame? I would even put green beans above edamame. You know why? You eat the pod, which is much more convenient than having a bunch of... Everybody's done this if they tell you they haven't done it, they're lying. First time you eat edamame, accidentally eating the pod and wondering why it's so fibrous, you don't eat the pod. Second time, that's three, but whatever. Second time eating edamame, you got two bowls, one for fresh edamame, one for the pods. You're going you're gonna to put one of those pods in your mouth accidentally, I guarantee it. It happens. Green peppers. I think these are little bad, and I'm going to explain why. I use them. Chilies. Namely a chili, to be honest. That's about it. I guess in a fajita, taco, nacho situation, yes, as well. But I just don't find the taste of a green pepper by itself to be pleasant. Um, I prefer red peppers, but I still think red peppers are kind of overrated, to be honest. A lot of people consider it like the holy grail of vegetables. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. It's okay. Many times in, in college... Uh, I would, you know, I'd cook like a steak and then like slice up a red pepper and put like some balsamic vinegar and uh, olive oil on it and be like, hmm, I'm cultured. But when I, when I got a little bit older, I was like, I'm just doing that. I'm putting on airs. I would rather just have, uh, I'd rather have the asparagus. I'd rather have some cabbage. But I think it's okay. And you know what? It's one of the most uh, fun vegetables to cut. Green olives, very simple. We've already done the foundational work here. They're slightly better than black olives or markedly better than black olives for me. They go into the good tier. Um, this is green onion. Okay. To me, these look a little thick to be green onions, but I guess they're, we'll, we'll see leeks later. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> um, green onions, I think they're good. I like, I like the green part. I like the white part. We use this all the time. We, we, it's probably like in our top five most purchased vegetable for sure. Flavor, garnish, side dishes. I like it a lot. I will say, sorry, my mouse wheel's acting up. What the heck is that under green onion? Also green plantains. Okay. Hold on, just green avocado. Oh, these are green bananas? What the heck is a green banana? It's a banana that's not ready. That's not its own species. I want to delete this from the list. These are called green tomatoes. I've always heard of them called tomatillos, I think. If they're if these are not the same thing, I apologize. Um, I, I kind of think tomatillos are bad. But I like tomatillo salsa a lot. So let's elevate it one. It's not quite in the eggplant here. This should be guava then, I'm assuming. And I do not... Uh, have an opinion on guava. I'm sorry. I know, I... Trust me. As someone who considers themselves culinarily worldly, the fact that we have a lot of vegetables and fruits and then never had it tier... Well, to be honest with you, it's, it's part of radical honesty. Because I've had most of these one time. Or two times. I just don't feel confident. I feel like I have to recuse myself. Again, I could just lie to you. Oh, guava? It's uh, pretty good. Oh, let's put it in the little bad tier. This is me being honest. So as I understand it, aren't heirloom tomatoes are just better versions of regular tomatoes? At least that's what the price tag would seem to have you believe. So I... I maybe I'm a victim of marketing. Anytime something says heirloom tomatoes, I'm like, ooh, I like those more than the regular ones. It is what it is. Cantaloupe? Sorry. Honeydew? Honeydew, in my opinion, is good. I think it's one tier above cantaloupe. I love the green melon more than the, the orange melon. It's true. I know you. That's horseradish. Okay, I, for a second I was like, you're a parsnip? Horseradish is... I'll, I'll level with you. I'm putting this in the little bad tier. But it's kind of unfair. I do eat a lot of horseradish because I eat a lot of cheap sushi. They don't use real wasabi. They use like green dyed horseradish paste. And if I'm having a prime rib or something, I'll put a horseradish uh, seasoning on it or something. But I would, I, I've never purchased this for my own home for sure. So this would probably be iceberg lettuce. I think iceberg lettuce is underrated, but simultaneously middle tier. I do buy iceberg lettuce all the time for, you know, easy salads at home. 
But, I mean, do you need to belabor the point on this one? You know what iceberg lettuce tastes like. It's crunchy water. The heck are you? Scrolling. Jackfruit. Okay, never had it. I understand it's used for, like, vegetarian pulled pork and stuff like that. So, I'd be eager to see it. Kale. You can't, you can't argue with me on... I mean, you can argue with me on this one, but you can't convince me. I think kale is... It's my favorite or second favorite leafy green. I love the taste of it. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you this if you're watching. Anybody that likes spinach but doesn't like kale and complains about how bad it tastes, I'm always like, you have the palate of a of a 12-year-old child. That's okay. But I'm like, it's the, it's the same thing. It's just the, the texture is slightly different. The flavor is slightly different, but they're all in the same genre. It's like being like, oh, I love explosions in the sky, but Godspeed, you Black Emperor, sucks. And you know what? This is the Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Never forget it. Kiwis. I have not had a kiwi in probably... I, w I would say I probably have not had a kiwi in 15 years. But I ate easily dozens, if not hundreds, as a child. I like a kiwi. I like it a lot. But I, I've, having not consumed it in 15 years, I can't elevate it above the middle range. Scrolling. Kohlrabi. Okay. So I have had kohlrabi. Uh, it's very popular now. But I, I don't think I could, I could pass judgment on it. Because again, I've only had it at restaurants. And I don't think... If, if you don't recognize it when you see it, and it's not like an, oh, it's a bad photo thing. I don't think I could reasonably have an opinion on kohlrabi. Kumquats, same boat. Leeks. I see leeks as a worse green onion with slightly different uses. But I do like the flavor of a leek. Plus, I mean, Farfetch'd was armed with one. Also known as a spring onion, I guess. So, I'll keep those in the middle range. Lemons. Lemons are weird, dude. I think I've got to put lemons in good. Flavor of a lemon. Great. Eating a lemon. Psychotic. Please go to the hospital. Do not eat these. The, the acidity is going to, like, rot all the enamel off your teeth. Surely you're just doing it in lieu of having a personality quirk, right? Don't eat this. That's madness. But the flavor of lemon, lemon juice, lemon zest, delicious, used in a ton of different cuisine. You got to put it in the good tier, at least. We buy these all the time. Plus, one of the rare fruits and vegetables that has, like, you know, garnish and drink usage as well. Limes, I'm going to be honest, same boat. But slightly worse. I actually think the flavor of a lime is a little bit better. Um, but I think I use lemon juice more in cooking. Lime juice, sure. Commonly used Mexican cuisine, Thai cuisine, etc., etc. But I, I, just being honest, I probably... You know what? No. There you go. I talked myself out of it. Longan. I don't want to be ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. Lychee. I have consumed lychee, but I don't know the... I, I wouldn't know enough to tell you, to be honest. Mandarins. Oh, my God. Look, we've been bereft of astounding for a while. I'm putting mandarin oranges in astounding. Delicious. I can already... Some mandarins, the, the, the peel is really tight, and when you're like... Peeling it, you're like, this isn't going to be that good. Some mandarins, you peel it and it all comes off in like one loose sheet. You're like, this is going to be amazing. And it's just like, it's so sweet and soft and juicy. So good and tasty. Mangoes. I got a mango. The flavor of a ripe mango is beautiful. Preparation's a little annoying. Uh... And an under-ripe mango, much like other fruits, it's like eating wood. But I do love a mango. And a dried mango, delicious as well. This is a great fruit. Mangosteen. I think I've learned this before. I do not have an opinion. Mung bean sprouts. Do not tell my wife. I think bean sprouts are a little bad. Uh, I, she, she really likes them. That's why I say that. 
It's also a very commonly used ingredient in Korean cuisine. Lots of soups made out of this. Uh, it, it's a part of a side dish in Korean cuisine called kongnamul. And like, I just, I don't hate them. But when I eat them, I am overpowered with like an earthy taste that I derive very little pleasure from. Uh, much, it, It's very similar to like a, it's like a crunchy mushroom to me. It's like when I bite into it, I'm like, I'm tasting like phloem, xylem, dirt. Not always unappetizing and never a deal breaker, but I don't really like the flavor of them. Napa cabbage, I'm going to be honest, it's just slightly a step below a full green cabbage for me. But I, I love Napa cabbage as well. This is a nectarine, aka a worse peach. Please, nectarine, see apricot. I know you. What are you? Okra! That's right. So I'm going to level with you. I actually like okra. A lot of people, it, it can get slimy in cooking. I, re, I don't mind it. I, I like it in a, in a gumbo or like a jambalaya or something like that. I'm, I'm pro okra. I don't consume that much of it, but I'm pro okra. Uh, onions. What can you say? It's astounding. On its own, marinated in soy sauce, battered and deep fried, sliced up and put into uh, any variety of foods, caramelized in a pan placed on top of a burger. An onion is one of the most versatile vegetables for sure. It might be the most ubiquitous vegetable, to be honest. Orange pepper. I do... Like it more than a green pepper. Oranges. Honestly, I see an orange as basically being the grapefruit's cousin. Like the flavor of both. Honestly, the reason I don't buy these very often is because when I go to the grocery store, I'm like, oranges are nice. But I like the taste of an apple more. And an apple's much easier to eat and usually cheaper. So, you've been out-competed, oranges. I apologize. What are you then? We're in the O's? I like to guess. And you're a parsnip, so you might be a... Pineapple melon. <laughs> no, what are you? Dunk, 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 dunk. Papaya! I should have known that, but... Again, I'll tell you, I have not had enough pure papaya to tell you. And now, never had it is the largest category. I will say, though, I'm not that embarrassed. I feel like compared to a lot of North American gamers, my never had it section is very low as compared to, you know, what other people's might be. At the same time, also, I'm like, you know, a lot of these I have had, I just haven't had them enough to actually feel confident. There should be a recusal section. Parsnips, look, I'm gonna level with you. I think these are a little bad. I see them as worse carrots. We're hitting the, we're hitting the speedy zone. Passion fruit. This is a weird one for me. I think I gotta put it in never had it, because I've only had it in like juice form that I can remember. And dessert form. Like, where they're like, hey, it's a little ice cream and a passion fruit garnish. You can't judge it based on that, okay? Peaches. These are a good fruit on the level of a mango. Same criticism, same compliments. A soft peach, beautiful. A hard peach, no thank you. Wait, what kind of, your peas? You're just peas. <laughs> I've never seen you in your natural habitat before. I think peas are in the middle range for me. A lot of people will disagree with that and like them more, I'm sure. But for me, I'm like, I'm never super into peas and I'm never super against them. Uh, so I'll level with you. There's two different kinds of persimmons here. I have had many persimmons in my life. They're almost like... A persimmon for me is like the, it's the cross between a fruit and a vegetable. It's almost like, what if we made a tomato, like something with the texture of a tomato that tasted like, um, not really like an apple, but I'm sure it had like a fruit-esque taste, almost like a melon taste. So I don't know which one of these persimmons is which. I do think they're pretty good though. I would put them in the same range as a pear. Pineapples, to be honest, I kind of put them in the middle range as well. Uh, just because 
they're hard to prepare or annoying to prepare. And I do think they're delicious. But from a culinary perspective, they don't offer that much. It's just a delicious fruit that's kind of annoying to make, you know, to, to prepare. But I do like a pineapple. You might say, NL, but you rank pineapple on pizza very high. Yes, but I'm not going to buy a whole pineapple just to slice a little up for pizza. That's madness. And if you are a fan of Hawaiian cuisine, you probably are not very happy with me right now. I apologize. I love pineapple. I just don't do it myself, okay? I don't do it myself often enough to justify it. Plum tomatoes. You cannot fool me. These are just... Mature grape tomatoes. All tomatoes are equal to me. A pomegranate. Expensive. Tasty. Weird to prepare. I never buy it, but I if somebody's like, you want some pomegranate seeds? I'm like, yeah. Then I eat them and I'm like, that's okay. Pumpkin. Ooh, that's bad. Nature didn't mess up too much. But everything in this genre... <laughs> bulb plus stalk not for me pumpkin pie I don't like it that much but it's by far my favorite kind of pumpkin um, pumpkin salad pumpkin you know pum pumpkin uh, like tempura it's not for me now I have had a pumpkin spice latte I had a sip of a pumpkin spice latte I get it I actually completely understand uh the in a drink for whatever reason i kind of like that pumpkin flavor but as a food not really You're, are you a purple potato is that what's going on here purple sweet potato okay um well i'm gonna put you at this because i have had it i'm gonna put you at the same level as sweet potato which i think for me personally is in the middle range and we'll talk about that more when we get there kints can't say I've knowingly had it. Radicchio. I like it. Most of the way that I consume this, I'm going to put this up here with iceberg. Most of the way that I consume this is shredded in a blend of greens. So how do I feel about it? I'm always like, ooh, red cabbage, which I guess is not what this is. But <laughs> on the bag, it says radicchio, and I've never really noticed its flavor. So let's put it in the middle range for now. Hairy fruits. Rambutan. See ya. Raspberries. I see you as about the same as blackberries. Maybe a little bit better, but not good enough to get to the blueberry tier up here in the in the good range. What the heck are you? A red pear? An Anjou pear. Okay, so I have had Anjou pears. I, I see them as, as being analogous, as you might expect, to the, uh, the Bartlett. Red peppers. Very simple. One level above green peppers. Red cabbage. Honestly... I think I got to put it with the Napa, but it's close. And I'll admit, it's aesthetic. The, the thing keeping this in astounding, honestly, is its ubiquity as like a Japanese appetizer with just a little bit of salt and sesame oil. You never see red cabbage for that. I have to assume there's a reason I'm baking that in and I'm willing to atone for my mistakes later. Red... Red grapes. Okay. I was looking at this and I was like, red olives? <laughs> I've never heard of these. Um, red grapes. Um, so weird that these are the first grapes. But I guess... I'm trying to think. We're, are, are, maybe we just call them purple grapes up here? I, I, these are middle range. I have no problem with them. But I prefer a green grape, which is... Coming up later? Yeah, with a different name apparently. Um, your red leaf lettuce. This is good. I don't have red leaf lettuce salads very often, but we eat it all the time as like the wrapping for a Korean barbecue. So you grill the meat, you put it in like a red lettuce, lettuce leaf or a, you know, a, a, what's it called? Now I've forgotten. A perilla leaf. And then you put like, you know, samjang and vegetables on it. I like a red leaf lettuce. Red olives. I've had you, but I don't really know what you are. You look like a kidney bean to me. Go hang out with the inferior olive. Red onion. This is a really tricky one for me. 
Even though I insta-locked it here. <laughs> Why is it tricky? Because... Um... Like, a red onion by itself tastes better than a yellow, white, or Vidalia onion. And it's also so much better in salads, and it's so much better in sandwiches. You know what? And on pizza. We're putting it up there. The only difference is, the red onion is not as commonly used as an ingredient in cooking, but I think I was baking in too much respect for, for its use as an ingredient. Its use as an actual vegetable, and in terms of its flavor profile, I'm putting it up there. I think it deserves it. Scrolling. Getting pretty close to the end here. Red plum. I feel like I probably have had you. Um, I Up here, I don't know if we, if we draw a delineation between a red plum and a plum. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, though. Um, red potatoes, straight up. We put Yukon Golds in the good range, I think, or the middle range. Yeah. I think a red potato is slightly better. Perhaps even markedly better. Radishes? Absolutely. I see those as being in the good tier as well. I love a radish. Somebody bothered to cut out the white background on the PNG for this one. Anytime I see the, the white circle with a red border in a, in a salad or a dish, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Rhubarb. I have a, had a lot of rhubarb. I think it's a little bad. I kind of like it. And a rhubarb pie or something like that, I'm okay with. Um, and whenever I see rhubarb like on a menu, I'm like, ooh, that's weird. But I don't eat it very often. And I don't really know what its uses are, to be honest. Um, what are you? Well, you're not a ripe plantain. So you are romaine lettuce. Okay. Hey, look, I've eaten all the lettuces. Just cut me some slack. Radicchio, rocket, arugula, uh, green leaf lettuce, iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, hearts of romaine, butter lettuce. You know, it's hard to tell them without having them side by side immediately. Romaine, I think it's better than iceberg lettuce. I think it's up here with the Napa cabbages and the red leaf lettuce. A russet potato. Dunk, 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 dunk. Ooh, without a doubt, astounding. Russet potato is... Bakeable, mashable, sliceable, then friable, boilable. It's it's the best potato by a mile. I love a russet. Rutabaga. That's what a rutabaga looks like, huh? I've had it. Consider it maybe a little bad. I, I, not that I dislike the flavor too much, but I'm always like... When I'm eating it, I'm like, ah, what are you? What do you want to be? You want to be a radish? You want to be a carrot? What are you? You want to be a turnip? It's strange. Shiitake mushrooms. Sorry. Shiitake mushrooms. Um, again, I think these are perhaps in the middle range because they're definitely above button mushrooms for me. I enjoy these okay. Spaghetti squash. Welcome to the bad tier. Am I a fool? Do they call it spaghetti squash because it looks like pasta? Or is this a photoshopped image of spaghetti squash? <laughs> Spinach. Okay. I'm going to level with you. Much like kale. Welcome to the S tier of green leafy vegetables. Delicious. Star fruit. Look, this is one I actually have had. I think star fruit is a little bad. I think it looks cool. But flavor wise, it does not taste as cool as it looks. It's just like, it's a nice citrus fruit, but, and also at the grocery store, star fruit is like, it's crazy expensive for the amount of flesh you get off of it. Do not want. Strawberries, I'm going to level with you. You're up here with the blueberry tier. I waffle on these from time to time, but I like them both. Very rarely buy them because they're expensive. Sugar cane. I have eaten sugar cane, but I got to put this in the bad tier. And I'll tell you, you can probably guess I don't use much sugar cane in my cooking or, you know, as ingredients for anything. This might be steeped in ignorance. The The times I've had sugar cane has been when, like, someone in my life, like a teacher in elementary school, went to, like, Central America or the Caribbean and came back with a bunch of sugar cane and then sliced off some so we could eat it. And we go, it's a vegetable, but it's sweet. So I don't really understand the use of sugar cane, but I will admit that I am steeped in ignorance here. Sweet potato is interesting for me. 
I think I'm going to elevate it to the good range. Previously, I probably did not have a sweet potato until I was at least 19 years old, which I know is baffling. Um, I got introduced to sweet potatoes in two ways. One was when sweet potato fries became popular. I went, I'll give it a shot. And I went, hey, these are pretty good. The other one is that when I was a little bit younger and I cared more about nutrition in this way, I was like, oh, sweet potatoes, they taste just like a potato, but they're better for you because they're a lower GI carbohydrate. Then I ate them and I was like, I've been tricked. These do not taste like a regular potato at all. Um, but I've eaten them a lot more as I've gotten older and I've grown to like them a lot more. I still think most regular potatoes are better, but I do appreciate a sweet potato now, for sure. It took me a while to get there, though. Can I level with you? I thought this video was going to be about 35 minutes long. <laughs> so, this is tamarind. I have had tamarind paste, but I, in all honesty, could not tell you what it tastes like. Um, and a tangelo, I know what it is. It's a... Like an orange or a lemon combined with a tangerine, but I've never had one, I'll admit. A tangerine, can I tell you, I do not really know the difference between a mandarin orange and a tangerine. But I will tell you, the main difference is if something's branded as a mandarin orange, there's like a 75% greater chance I'll buy it. But I do like tangerines as well. In my head, I'm like, tangerines are a little more acidic and sourer, but... I don't know how valid that is. Tomatillos. <laughs> okay, green tomatoes. Turns out I've never had you. Tomatillos, please take your place <laughs> in the little bad tier. <laughs> turmeric. This is a weird one for me, because I've never thought of turmeric as a vegetable. I've always thought of it exclusively as like a seasoning. Um, so I'm gonna rate it as a seasoning and not as a vegetable. As a seasoning, I think it's good. Very useful, particularly uh, if you're making like Indian or other South Asian dishes. Um, but I've never purchased turmeric like root at the store and grated it myself. So this is another one that's kind of steeped in ignorance, I'll admit. Um, turnip. I think turnips are fine. But I, I really look at a turnip as like a much worse potato, to be honest. And I know they're slightly different, but... For me, anytime I have a turnip, I'm like, man, if you had just used a potato here instead, I'd probably like it more. But sometimes I'm like, ah, you know, the turnip, I, I have like a turnip and a mashed potato kind of mix. And I'm like, you know what? The turnips add a nice wrinkle to this. Watermelon is, uh, in my opinion, a good fruit. It suffers because of its seasonality. I only equate this with the summer. Um... And I also never buy it because you have to clean your whole kitchen after you chop it. But I, I eat it whenever possible, for sure. Grapes. It's a, it, I'm so close. If I just liked the flavor of grapes a little bit more, they'd be astounding. You buy them in a bunch. You eat as many as you want or as few as you want, and you're good to go. But for me, I really appreciate the convenience of grapes. I like the taste, but I don't love the taste, and that's why you're in the good tier. White mushrooms. Okay. White mushroom, um, you're, you're down here with the other button mushrooms. I see you as analogous to one another. Now we have white onions. Okay, so we have a difference then between a white onion and a Vidalia or yellow onion. I think a white onion is a little bit worse. I always buy a yellow or Vidalia onion to cook with unless a recipe specifically calls for a white onion. But I, I like a white onion. Okay. In fact, you know what? I would actually drop that to middle. I almost never purchased this. Uh, yellow pepper. <laughs> is that what this is? Yes, it turns out yellow starts with Y, which does come after W in the alphabet. Um, yellow peppers, I honestly see them right up here with the oranges and the reds. I will say I think I'm going to elevate red to good, and I didn't think I had it in me. But I think that when you look at these four peppers... I could not feel like I'm being honest unless I did admit I prefer the taste of a red pepper to all the other peppers. And the green pepper, I defer to all the other peppers. Yellow squash. Welcome to the squash tier. And then uh, zucchini, which is also called zucchini squash, apparently. 
I is controversial. I think zucchini is a worse cucumber for me. So I think zucchini is a little bad, but it is kind of like a legitimized cucumber. You can eat it cooked and it can actually bring you some value. So there's my list of all fruits and vegetables. Do not argue with me. Astounding fruits and vegetables. Apples, bananas, Brussels sprouts, green cabbage, garlic, kale, spinach, mandarin oranges, onions, red onions, russet potatoes. And the worst, cranberries, any types of squash, and sugar cane, which mostly I just don't understand. And I, I throw myself on the mercy of the court. And then a lot of fruits and vegetables that, to be honest, I should probably have. And, well, to be honest, I have had but don't really know. <laughs> the only ones I actually haven't had, I haven't had an acai berry. I haven't had a, uh, a, a gooseberry. I haven't had bitter melon. Have had fava beans. Haven't had bread melon. I think I have had whatever this is, uh, rapini. I just don't remember it. Have had dates. Some, and then most of the fruits and stuff down here. But anyway, that's my list. Again, thank you to the member of the community that made this. Your name on, on Twitter was down here, Young Thug Vivo. <laughs> that's not the name of your uh, Reddit account, which is where I saw it posted. This is a really fun one for me to do, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I encourage you to share your dissent and my most ridiculous uh, hypocriticisms. In the comments, of course, if you're enjoying the tier list, subscribe. We're hitting 1 million eggs in 2020 with hot content like this. Like the video if you enjoyed it. It helps me to know, like, hey, people enjoyed this video. I should make more like it in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!